Hi, everyone. So I wanted to do an impromptu training this morning because I have been elated and really just coming off of reunion and jumping into my business. And I wanted to share some information with you guys that I thought you might find helpful. Um, this group has been an instrumental part of my career with Sensei because I live in a very small town, um, kind of live far away from people. And so having the ability to have online parties has been the make or break of my business. And so sharing that information with you guys is my way of thanking you all for being so supportive and inspirational in my journey that I just feel like sharing information is the way to do that, to thank you, okay? So I want to just go over with you guys very quickly this morning, um, 10 tips for having successful online parties. And I'm not going to preface it just for Facebook and you'll see why as I go through the 10 tips. All right, are you ready? Um, thanks to all of you that are joining in live. If you are watching the replay, then go ahead and put a hashtag replay so that I know that these videos are valuable to you and that you are watching them. Um, and let's get started. Okay, so tip number one. Tip number one is to utilize the ability to go live. A lot of you are like, oh, I don't want to go live. I don't like going live. It's too daunting. It's too scary. It's this huge screen and people are watching me. Well, here's the deal, right? So here I am sitting in my office. There's absolutely nobody around. I pretty much am looking in a mirror because I can't see you guys. All I can see is the potential for comments, but um, I'm alone. Nobody's here to make fun of me. Nobody's here to laugh at me, which is really what we're fearful of, right? So my suggestion is to you is to just do it. But if you need to practice, 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 because that will help create yourself a group that you and maybe one other person is in and practice. Go live in the group by yourself and just practice being on camera, practice hearing yourself, practice seeing yourself and just go live, right? Otherwise, just jump in head first. Go right for it because honestly, guys, going live has been one of the hugest instrumental impacts of my business because what are we? We're a home party business. Well, we were. And what does that do? We go in front of people, we demonstrate products, and we talk to them and we interact with them. Up until the live online, it's been a little bit different and a little bit more difficult. But now that we're live, this is just like having a home party, right? You put all your products in front of you, you show them off, you know, um, and it's just like a home party. So go live. There are very, 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 very few parties that I have now that I do static posts. I do have some posts with my live, um, but for the most part, it is just a live feed, a live stream. I just go live, I do the party, I interact with customers, and we have fun, okay? So tip number one, go live, okay? Tip number two, be authentic. Be you, be you, boo, right? Be real, be authentic. Listen, they don't want to see me, they wanna see you. They're your customer for a reason, right? They're buying from you for a reason. They trust you, and so they're going to buy from you. People buy from people they like, know, and trust, right? So if they trust you because you're being, excuse me, authentic, I get really passionate passionate, and I get like all the clumped. Um, if they trust you because you're being authentic, then you are going to have more business, period, right? Because I'm not going to buy from somebody that I don't trust. If I think they're being fake, I'm probably going to go find somebody else, right? So be authentic. Don't be Edie. Don't be Anna. Don't be a Nick. Don't be Katie. Be you, right? Be authentic because the faker you are, the less likely your business is going to succeed. The more authentic you are, the more successful your business is going to be. I guarantee you, okay? So if you don't say the word wahoo, don't say the word wahoo. If you don't use your hands to talk, then don't use your hands to talk, okay? But I will tell you, the more authentic you are, the better it's gonna be. But don't be boring Billy either, okay? Sorry, Billy. But don't be boring, right? You want to be passionate about what you love. We love Sensi, that's why we're here. So be passionate, be um, 
I just realized that somebody is going to be showing up here in about two seconds um, and it's going to disrupt this whole broadcast. So I am so sorry that the dogs are going to bark. Somebody's going to be here and hopefully they're going to be not talking too much. So <coughs> hang on a second, guys. And I wish I could mute this, but I can't. Okay. Here's the beauty of being authentic, right? The bread man's here. <laughs> The bread man is here, and he's probably going to want some money. And so, hey, Shh. Um, I'm going to have to tell him that I'm live so that he doesn't stick around too long. Sorry, guys. Sorry, but this is too funny. It's too funny. I'm actually live right now. If you want to say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, no. I just need the two bread. Nope, no, I do need the bread, not the sandwiches. Not the sandwich. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, he didn't like that so much. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, so be authentic, right? If that happens, if the kids interrupt you, if the dogs bark, if somebody shows up at the door, whatever, if you are authentic, people will relate to you, right? It's it's life. It's, it's, this is, that could not have been timed more perfectly. And I didn't time it. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's be awesome. Let's be authentic. Okay. Um, and now my daughter's calling. She's going to try again. Woo! Not a good time to go live in the morning. All right. Number three, um, hostess coach. Hostess coach is probably one of the biggest things that you can do no matter what kind of party you are doing. Okay. Hostess coaching. The hostess needs to know what you expect from them. Do you want them to comment? Do you want them to post? Do you want them to call? How many people do you want them to invite? Do not invite more than 30 or 50 people. You wouldn't want more than 30 or 50 people in your home. And it's a law in um, the educational world that you have to have at least one teacher per 26 students. So, hey, if the educational system thinks that that's where we are at, then maybe you should need more than one person if you're going to have more than 50 people, right? Okay. So plus you want the people invited to feel special. So they need to personally invite people. They need to um, interact in the party. Think about, you know, if you were at a home party and everybody starts coming in and you're welcoming people and the party gets started, everybody goes to sit in the living room and the hostess takes off and goes and sits in her bedroom. How awkward would that be, right? So you want to make sure that they understand they need to be there right? They need to be there. They need to be in the group, in the event. And I don't care if it's a group or an event, guys, we're not going there. It doesn't matter really. It's really up to you if you want to set it up at a group or an event. Um, but she, the hostess needs to know what you expect from them. Okay. The guests trust the hostess. So through osmosis, <laughs> the guests are going to trust you because the hostess trusts me, right? So you need to make sure that the hostess is active and being seen, right? The biggest difference between a home party and a Facebook party is we can't actually see if they're there, right? They need to interact. That's the way we're going to see if they're there. All right. So hostess coach, make sure the hostess knows what you expect from them. Okay. The other thing that goes along with hostess coaching, which is number four is hostess VIPs. The best way to get interaction in your group or in your event, your party is to have what we call hostess VIPs. The hostess picks between three and five people that become VIPs for the party. You're going to send a little tiny hostess packet, maybe a scent circle or some samples with a catalog and order form and a little letter that says you have been selected as our party's VIP. They're going to show up to the party because now they feel uber special, right? They're going to probably place an order because they feel uber special and that the hostess picked them as a VIP they're going to interact in that party because now that's something that you're going to post in the letter. You're going to make in the letter saying, we really want you to help us interact and make a successful party for the hostess. Okay. So doing hostess VIPs is a super good idea because it just interact, it, 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 um, enlivens the party. Okay. So that's tip number four. Tip number five is, um, To use your catalog. Okay, so here's our catalog. The catalog is the best tool that you possibly could have. A lot of you are saying, well, Edie, I don't have all the products. I don't have all the products to show. That's okay. That's okay. 
and I never know what to do. I never know what to talk about. Well, guess what? Our catalog has a table of contents. Just go down the list, talk about all the stuff in the table of contents. You won't forget anything. And if you don't have the product, that's okay. Show them, show them the product, right? Show them the product, talk about the product. You don't have the product, that's okay. Show them the product, right? You can actually show them more in the catalog because you probably aren't gonna have every warmer, okay? Um, the other thing is that I have never, I want you to hear this, I have never, ever, ever had an issue with not having the scents under their nose. Our descriptions on our website and in our catalog are so spot on, I have never had an issue with them not smelling the scents, ever. You know why? I've never made it an issue, okay? So just remember that. Plus, if you wanna read a scent, read it with enthusiasm. Blood Orange Spice. This sweet tart trio of candied apple, blood orange puree, and cinnamon stick will satisfy your autumn obsession. Doesn't that smell amazing? Okay, hang on a second. I'm live in the Facebook party group. Want to say hi? No? Okay, we're talking about being authentic, and this is actually very authentic, so thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. She hates that poor thing. <laughs> Put her off. Okay, so see how reading the scent actually makes it sound amazing? I'm snow over it. You know you love it. Sage, whispering pine, and cedarwood bursting with bright berries will rekindle your winter romance. Okay, guys, it's never been an issue that I've not had the sense. Just saying. Okay, so number five was use the catalog. Number six, interaction. Super, super important. You must have interaction in your party for it to be a success. If it's dead air, it's probably going to bomb. Not always, but most of the time it's going to bomb, okay? If your hostess is MIA, but there are people in the event or in the party, then recruit a friend to come and help you interact, okay? Have them comment on your live, have them ask questions, have them asking questions, have them say, oh my God, that's such an amazing product, I love it, I use it all the time, blah, 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 blah. It's best if they act like a customer and not another consultant because another consultant, they're gonna expect them to be all high and mighty on Sensi, right? So. Have somebody come in and play customer and be part of the party and be interactive and that will get some of the juices flowing, okay? So make sure that the hostess is interacting, but make sure if they're not, that you are getting some interaction from somewhere else. Hopefully those VIP people are going to be interacting as well. And if they're not, message them. Say, hey, can you pop some questions in there? We'd love to see some interaction with you guys and let's get some other people going too, okay? Uh, number seven, they need to know, oh, I'm sorry, themes, have themes like bingo, or, um, a lot of times I'll send a message to the hostess and I'll say, Hey, um, I'm doing a little bit of a, a giveaway. And if you tell your customers, now remember, you got to do this in a private message, do this in a private message. Um, if they post a picture wearing a purple shirt, they will be entered into my door prize drawing. How fun is that, right? So now all of a sudden people are posting pictures of their purple shirts and they're like, what's going on? And you say, hey, message your hostess. She'll tell you. She'll tell you what's going on, right? So make it a theme. You know, if it's Christmas, if it's a holiday, if it's um, summer solstice, whatever, make up an excuse for it to be a theme and go with it, run with it, okay? Because that's always fun to add that element into your parties, okay? So number seven was themes. Number eight, they need to know how to place an order. So explain to the hostess first during your hostess coaching, but then also explain either on your live or in a static post um, in the event or in the party. I, 98% of the time, send them to my website and they order right off the website. They don't care about shipping. They know that it's going to come directly to them. I don't have to deal with credit cards. They just send it 
right through the system and they attach it to the hostess's party. Okay. So usually I will share that specific uh, personal shopping link in the party page. Okay. Um, 98% of my customers order right online through my PWS. No questions asked. Guess what? Shipping isn't an issue either. Do you know why? Because I don't make it an issue. When we make it an issue, it automatically becomes an issue for our customers. Don't make issues that don't exist. Okay. Okay. Um, so 98% of the time I send them right to my PWS. I don't have to do anything. It's so simple. The other way is I have a Google form and they can fill out the Google form with their information of what they want. And then I'll place the order that way, or they can message the order to me or the hostess. And then we'll place it that way. The other thing is to make sure that you have payment acceptability, like Venmo, PayPal, cash, Facebook messenger, um, have some modality of being able to accept payment um, so that you can give them options. I've signed up for all of those so that I can just offer them whatever is convenient for them. Okay. So those are ways that you can collect payment. All right. Number eight is to ask everyone to join. Everybody. Ask everybody to join, specifically the hostess, right? And how do you ask people? Just ask. Just ask. Guys, I've been in, and I'm not doing this to brag, but I've been in the top 100 trips that have been offered, right? I've gone to Africa. I've gone to New Zealand. I've gone to Greece. I ask. I have 110 front line. That's because I've asked people to join. And when you're authentic in asking, it doesn't come off across as salesy, right? So I don't go up to say, have you ever considered joining Sensi? I will ask them that if there's been a conversation around it. But most of the time, like the hostess, I'll be like, hey, you know what? You just really did so well in this party and you could have made X amount of commissions. I think you should probably join. So that's my way of asking. I'm being authentic with my conversation. I'm listening to them, knowing potentially what's going on in their lives. And so that way I can piggyback on it and say, hey, look, you could be making some extra money. That seems to be something that you need right now. Or you say you love to travel. I'm watching all of these pictures of you traveling. Why don't you try to do it for free? Join on, get some sales, get some recruits, and we can get you on those trips for free, right? You have to ask. If you don't ask, the answer is always no, period. If you want to grow and you want to earn incentives, you got to ask people to join you, period. Just ask, okay? Okay. And then number 10 is follow up with each guest, whether they ordered or not, okay? Typically what I will do is I will go to the hostess and say, hey, have you contacted everybody? Has everybody placed their order? If she says yes, then say, okay, great. Do you mind if I message the people that RSVP'd or didn't RSVP in the group and make sure that everything is all set with them and that they understand how to order and whatever. And usually they'll say, yep, absolutely, that's no problem. And so then when I go to the guest, I can say, hey, I spoke with Kathy and she said it was okay if I messaged you. I just wanted to make sure you were all set and um, see if I could help you place an order. If they did place an order, then hopefully you're thanking them on the event page and saying, hey, thank you so-and-so for your order, okay? 10 tips, all right, let's go through them real quick. One, go live. Two, be authentic. Three, hostess coach. Four, hostess VIPs. Five, use your catalog. Six, how to order. Seven, themes. Eight, ask everyone to join. Nine, I missed one. Interaction. I missed that one. That was probably number six. Um, and then 10 is follow up with everyone. Okay. Uh, seven, eight. Uh, I must have doubled up on a number. I did. Anyway, you got them. You got them all. All right. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing day. Let's earn this incentive. If you have any questions, just let me know. Bye, everyone.